Hello, every pony. Scar 89 here. It's 7:20, and it's raining outside. And I really didn't want to do a chapter of Coenshai right now, so instead, I thought I would give you guys a little treat and read um, two mares in a banana boat. It's uh, apparently hilarious. So. Uh, it's going to be a raw reading, which means I'm not going to edit this. You're just going to hear it the way it is. Um, so, without further ado, here is Two Mares in a Banana Boat. And chapter is called Bananana. Okay. Twilight Sparkle dragged herself down the stairs of her tree home, toward the kitchen and the hope of food. The thought of breakfast was the only real reason she had even bothered getting up in that early in the morning. The very word breakfast had consumed her thoughts entirely, leaving nothing but empty gnawing hung oh leaving nothing but empty, gnawing hunger in its wake. As she staggered, still half asleep, into the brightly tilted root kitchen, Sorry, let me start that one up. As she staggered, still half asleep, into the brightly tilted kitchen, she was met by the bright smile of her number one assistant, who was at the moment carrying a rather large basket of groceries in his tiny claws. Hiya, Twilight, he said into the basket of food. I didn't really expect you to be down here this early. He somehow managed to set the massive basket down on top of the counter and began to unload the goods as he talked to Twilight. Yeah, I'm a, I'm just really hungry, she admitted a bit sheepishly. Perhaps skipping dinner last night wasn't the best idea. Her stomach, not wanting to be left out of the conversation, made its presence known with a low growl. Spike chuckled. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Let me see what I can whip you up. Accepting a short nuzzle from the unicorn, he began to dig through the basket with muted ferocity. Let's see, I can make some oatmeal, or fry up some hay browns, or cut some fruit. Yes, fruit sounds good, Twilight cut him off, dropping her eyelids as she imagined the merit of apples and oranges and grapes lined in front of, up in front of her, particularly waiting to be devoured. Particularly waiting to be devoured. Oh, no, that says patiently waiting to be devoured. Sorry. I don't know what I was reading. They danced in her mind's eyes, so tantalizingly close, yet so far away. So enticed was she by her fruit fantasy that she hardly heard Spike utter a quick, You got it! as he went to work in preparing the meal for the two of them. As he began to gather up the array of brightly colored fruits, one particularly, oh, one in particular caught Twilight's eye. Hey, Spike, what the hey is that? She pointed a hoof in disdainfully. What? She pointed a hoof in disdainful, oh, disdainful curiosity at a medium-sized cylindrical object that had just been pulled out of the bag. Spike picked up the item in question, turning it a bit as he looked it over. It was a radiant yellow in color, about two-thirds of a hoof long with a temper stem on one end. Oh, this? said Spike. This is a banana. I... Before he could continue, the yellow fruit was wrenched from his claws, floating over in front of Twilight's face as she studied it with amusement, amused curiosity. Banana. She rolled the word around in her mind, allowing it to bounce around a bit in her head. Yeah, some pony was telling the selling them at the market. He actually tried to give me his entire stock for free. Scott, Spike glanced his eye his eyes over, remembering the unusual conversation he had with the street vendor. He seemed really eager to get rid of them. Twilight took. Uh, Twilight too lost in thought to hear Spike. Oh no, no, Twilight too lost in thought to hear Spike nodded absent-mindedly as she continued to absorb the exterior details of the strange new food in front of her. At last, she tore her eyes. 
Sorry, those are my dogs. At last, she tore her gaze from the fruit and saw it on her one assistant. Well, that's enough. She angled the cylindrical fruit in front of her. Let's see how it tastes. Wait, stop! The fruit stopped, suspended several inches away from Twilight's mouth, caught in a waving purple blanket of magic. What? You can't eat it like that. Spike very visibly restrained himself from face clawing. The fruit is inside. You need to take off the skin first. He held up an already peeled banana with its soft, fleshy inside exposed. See? So, Twilight muttered, the fruit is inside? I just need to remove the outside. The baby dragon nodded. In simplest terms, yes, just peel off the skin and BAM! He waved his arm around in a tiny mock flourish. Fruit! With a nod, Twilight angled the banana, searching tentatively for the most advantage angle of attack. As she held the firm fruit with one forehoof, she gripped the tapered stem in the other and pulled down, expecting the, the skin to peel right off. It didn't. Instead, the stem collapsed downward, rewarding the purple unicorn with a disheartened squashing sound. She muttered, bemused, Huh? As she frantically played with the stem, jamming it around like it was a malfunctioning gear shifter. Uh, Twy, not now, Spike! She continued to tug uselessly at the yellow stem with vigor, her face contorting with annoyance as she attempted to open the enigmatic fruit. I don't see why she doesn't just use her magic. I mean, I've seen her do stuff like that before. You know, I can open that for you if you'd like. Suddenly, Spike was staring into an inferno of mild annoyance as Twilight bore holes into his head with her disparate glare. No! I can do this! Summoning an alarming ma amount of magical energy, she encased the banana in a furious, glowing orb of purple magic. With a grunt of effort from the unicorn, the radiant ball of light exploded with a muffled whoom, sounding, se sending several books tumbling from the shelves. Both Twilight and Spike peered curiously at the small charred patch on the floor that her destructive magic had caused. In it sat the banana, smoldering in a bit of blackened but otherwise unharmed. Oh. In it sat the banana, smoldering and a bit blackened, but otherwise unharmed. The skin was still firmly in place, much to their chagrin. Much to their chagrin? I don't know what that says. Okay, so apparently bananas are magic proof, too. Picking up the offending fruit, she gave one last violent tug on the stem before wilting in subdued anguish. Her eyes and her Confident, deflating with disappointment. Oh, it's okay, Twy. Here, I'll get it for you. Before Spike could even reach for the infuriate, infuriating fruit, a small explosion rocked the library. The resulting shock wave knocked several loose books to the floor, along with a scared and downright flabbergasted Spike. I like that word, flabbergasted. Before any pony had a chance to recover from the shocking blast, a pink blur shot into the room with the force of a small freight train, defying most known laws of physics by stopping right in front of an equally surprised Twilight Sparkle. Hiya, Twilight! My pinky sense just told me something crazy was going on here! For her part, Twilight just gawked at as Pinkie Pie's two massive blue orbs Get, oh, okay, For her part, Twilight just gawked as Pinkie Pie's two massive blue orbs gazed right through her. As she stared, she noticed that the wall behind her continue, contained a rather Pinkie Pie-shaped hole. Pinkie, this tree is at least six feet deep, thick. How did you just... No time! The overzealous pink pony clamped her unusually strong hooves onto Twilight's jaw, shaking her a bit. My pinky sa sense says that what's ever going to happen, it's going to be a doozy! Donning a detective's hat that had simply been pulled out of thin air, 
She began snooping around the library, glaring at an offending object with a carefully observant eye. What were you just doing? Um, I was just trying to open this banana, but I couldn't get it open. So Spike was about to get it for me, he, she huffed, until you tore a hole in my wall, that is. Once again, Twilight felt the eyes of her friend on her. This time, however, they gazed at her with curious befuddlement. What the heck? What the high haze of banana? That sounds something like Applejack would say, not Pinky. Spike, now somewhat recovered from his episode, walked to the pair of conversant ponies, holding the same charred, slightly squashed fruit in his arm's length. Oh, at an arm's length. Pinky stared at it for a moment, bobbing her head from side to side before reaching out a tentative hoof and poking it. Wow! she mused. What does it do? Whatever concern she had for her Pinky Sense prediction was now lost replaced only by utter fascination with the mysterious yellow object in front of her. It's a fruit, replied Spike, matter-of-factly. So, you eat it? Oh, okay. Yeah, only the fruit is on the inside. You need to peel off the outside part first with a swipe of a hoof. Pinky grabbed the banana firmly in her hooves. Oh, why didn't you just say so? Oh. oh, why didn't you just say so, Twilight? I could have gotten it for you. The tut tuttered. Oh, she tut tuttered her unicorn friend playfully. You really should have just asked me the first time, silly. Ignoring the bemused look from Twilight, she turned her attention to the fruit in her hooves and began to grapple with it in a similar fashion to Twilight's frenzied struggle a moment ago. You just have to pull really super duper hard, she grunted in between strained tugs at the stem of the banana, and then you profit, as she gave the stem a final wrenching yank with all of her boundless strength and energy, expecting to be rewarded with the seemingly impossible to reach inside of the fruit. Instead, all she succeeded, instead, all she was succeeded in doing was propelling herself into the opposite wall, leaving another pinky-shaped hole in Twilight's house. As she was peeled off the wall by gravity, she huffed exasperatingly. Well, that certainly is one conundrum you've got yourself there. Twilight, I don't think there is any way to open that baby sort of... She paused as Twilight and Spike stared on in confusion and mild horror. A satanic smile spread across Pinkie Pie's face. Oh, no. She rubbed her hooves together menacingly as a devious cackle bounded off the walls of the library. Her hair ominously deflated, swaying slightly as the now mad party pony laughed. I know just what to do! Okay, now I'm getting scared. Just as soon as her manic phrase had come out, it ended. Her hair sprung back to life with an audible and her face once again returned to its normal, energetic, and smiling self. Uh, Pinky? Twilight stammered, slowly retreating from her friend as she gave her a scared glance. Are you okay? Oh, just Peachy! Now I... I sorry. Oh, just Peachy! Now I'm even better than Peachy! What's better than Peachy? Maybe Kakiki? Wait, is that a word? Pinky paused for a moment and thought, Oh well! It's a word now. Anyway, yeah, Twy, I'm just cupcakey. Plus, she added, I know how to open that silly banana na 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 thingy. Twilight's face went from distrained at Pinky's ramblings to Pinky. Oh. Twilight's face went from dis disinterest oh disinterested at Pinky's rambling to Pinky has a solution. Yay! With all the speed of Rainbow Dash in a nosedive. Pinky, oh, oh, okay, sorry. Twilight's face went from disinterested at Pinky's rambling to Pinky has a solution, yay, with all the speed of Rainbow Dash in a nosedive. Pinky, that's great. What is it? An ecstatic purple, oh, an ecstatic purple unicorn ran up to the party pony and grabbed her, shaking, oh, and grabbed her, shaking her a bit too violently in her rush. 
Once Pinky had recovered from her mild shock from Twilight's over-enthusiastic jarring, she disentangled herself from her friend's grip and cantered over to a particularly sparse space in the corner. Why, this, of course! From out of nowhere, she produced a large cloak draped over some unknown object. Whatever it was, though, it was very large and very ominous. Pinky, what is that? Instead of answering, she yanked away the cloak with a flourish of random party streamers and a small shower of confetti. Ta-da! The space under the cloak had somehow been filled with Pinky's one and only party cannon. Oh my god. A small blizzard of confetti shot from... Oh, a small blizzard of confetti shot from its barrel. Electing a joyous squeak from the pink mare commanding it. I don't understand why in all these weirdo fanfics, Pinky just can pull stuff out of thin air. I mean, it seems obvious in the show, but not in the story. Twilight, who had watched the event unfold with skeptical apprehension, now stood in utter confusion and a good bit of fear. Wait, how's your party cannon going to help? What are we going to do? Throw a banana, a uh, please open up so we can eat you party? <laughs> she chuckled dryly at her own joke. Why, no, silly! Before Twilight could react to Pinky's distrained plan, the pink party pony had snatched up the banana and stuck it down the barrel of the cannon. <laughs> Only as... <laughs> That's what she said. Only as Pinky was lightening the fuse did Twilight manage to stamp out a terrified voice. What are you doing? This! With a manic smile and a salute, Pinky laughed, at the fuse, laughed as the fuse ran down. Her heralding some unforeseen force of banana-esque destruction, the likes of which Twilight Sparkle has never seen before. Well, she only learned about a banana this morning, so I don't see how she's ever seen anything banana s destruction -y. Anyway, I don't want the story. With a thunderous boom that threatened to tear the tree off its roots and dislodge any remaining books that still clung to the shelves, the cannon bleached forth a massive explosion of confetti, streamers, and pieces of banana. Unfortunately, the poor fruit had not survived the brief but forceful trip, <laughs> scattering, in scattering into a million tiny sticky pieces upon leaving the cannon. It flew through the air for a fraction of a second at humbling speeds before splattering all over a very shocked and angry Twilight Sparkle. Instead of her normal purple hue, Twilight now found herself covered in a patchwork of sticky yellow polka dots. As she stood there, speechless with anger and covered in banana, the last of the confetti rained down from the ceiling, sticking to Twilight's banana-covered coat. Great. Just great. Just add insult to injury, why don't you? Pinkie Pie bounded up to her, unbridled joy on her face. Wow, that was super duper extra funerific! Where's the silly banana na 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 now? Oh, it's in my coat, Twilight paused, and in my mane, and just about everywhere else. Twilight locked her eyes on her obviously pink friend with a glare of righteous fury. If looks could kill, poor Pinky would already be six feet under. So, the party cannon didn't work? It... Oh, if looks could kill, all of Equestria would be silenced forever by the terrifying stare of Twilight Sparkle. No, it didn't work at all. You not only blasted me with projectile fruit, you covered half of my library with banana goop and confetti. She motioned to the walls of her library, which were now coated in a thin, glossy banana sludge. Several million tiny pieces of covered, colored paper were trapped in the gooey embrace, their cheerful, colorful shine belaying the fact that it would take days, if not weeks, to clean it all up. She only put one banana in, and bananas aren't really that big. Unless it was, like, a Donkey Kong-sized banana, then I'm not really sure how bana a banana could fill the entire library with gooeyness. Anyway. So, this is a bad thing then? Pinky, oblivious to her unicorn friend's utter rage, stared on contentedly as Twilight grounded her teeth in anguish. Yes. Yes, it is. If looks could kill, the very universe itself would cease to exist, crushed by the unceasing weight of Twilight's hysterical, angry gaze. Oh. 
Pinky replaced her oblivious blank stare with one of happy realization. That must have been the doozy that my Pinky sense was telling me about! She laughed out a gleeful chair as she cantered around Twilight in happiness. I knew it would be big! Looks like this place will need weeks to clean up! Maybe months! The pink pony stopped for a moment beside... Uh, what? The pink... It says the pink pony stopped for a moment beside from Twilight. Okay. And with a quick flick of her hoof, scooped some of the banana goop off her peeved unicorn companion. As she tasted the stuff for the first time, her joyous grin grew even wider as her pupils dilated in delight. Oh, wow! This is really good! It's like, sweet, but in a, you know, it's a good for you, okay? It's okay to eat 20 of them. Kind of sweet. She motioned to Spike, who had taken cover under one of the nearby tables as soon as the destructive pink mare had wheeled out her party cannon. Spiky, do you have any more banana nananas? They're just delicious! Hesitantly, the baby dragon climbed from his safe haven and into the destroyed battleground of the library. As he did, he gave his adopted sister an apprehensive look. Um, should I just give her one? With Twilight begrudgingly approval, Spike double-timed into the kitchen, where he proceeded to grab one of the remaining bananas from the counter. To be sure that Pinky didn't get the opportunity to peel this one like she had the last, the purple dragon had the dubious honor of removing the skin. After the task was complete, he brought it out of the main foyer of the library. Twilight was still in an exact same position as she was before. Her eyes locked angrily on the bubbly pink mare across from her, legs planted more sol solidly than the tree roots to the aged hardwood floor, eyes twitching slightly. Pinky never wanted to say, oh, Pinky never wanted to stay in the same place for more than a few seconds. Sat across from the th ticked unicorn with her trademark toothy grin plastered on her face. The tension in the air was a thick was as thick as the wall of the tree. Fortunately, Pinky could easily break both on a whim. Oh yeah! She squealed as Spike, hesi Spike hesitantly presented her the banana. Thanks, Spikey! I don't know why she's calling him Spikey. That doesn't make any sense. I've never heard that before. Pinky snatched the fruit from the dragon's claws without a moment's hesitation and held the ripe fruit to her mouth. Right before she bit down onto the tasty treat, however, she halted. Hey, Twilight! She asked almost tentatively. What, Pinky? Do. Do you want a piece? A disturbing mix of anger, bottling rage, and crushing defeat coursed through Twilight's face in the space of a few seconds. The display was too much for her, however, and she rocked back onto her haunches with a dismayed and apathetic sigh. Fine, she relented. I'll have a piece. She spit out the words like they had somehow offended her taste buds. Well, she did just get defeated by a fruit. With a satisfied squeak, Pinky hooved her friend a piece of the red, rage-inspiring fruit. Twilight accepted it with a grunt, popping it into her mouth with a quick flick of her hoof. The worst part about eating the banana wasn't the fact that she, had pr that she would probably be spending the next few weeks scraping its sibling off the wall of her library. The worst part wasn't that the fairy pony who had directly caused all the destruction was now sitting next to her, silently snacking with an ob oblivious chipper smile on her face. No, the worst part was that it tasted absolutely delicious. As the two munched on the sweet yellow fruit, Twilight utterly uttered miserably, I hate bananas. The end. That one's kind of funny. Um, that was a good little one that was hilarious, and yet it was not stupid or retarded in any way. Um, I'm not going to edit this, so this is, what you hear is exactly what I read, even right now. So the reason that guy who sold the bananas had to sell all his bananas, because I guess ponies couldn't peel them off. Oh well. I don't really like bananas all that much. Sorry. 
Uh, so yeah, this has been um, two ponies and or two pony two mares in a banana boat. Weird name, funny story. I'll put a link in the description if you want to read it yourself. Um, but until then, I will see you guys later. Run!